The Mike Douglas Show. Mike was born into a family of uh, beautiful parents. His mother started as a seamstress and did, and did the usual things that women did to help make a living in those days. A beautiful lady and uh, very Irish, and his dad was more Irish. He worked for the uh, railroad company. His uh, brother was born before Mike. His name was Robert Bob, Bob Dowd and his uh, sister was Helen Dowd, and uh, then there was Mike. He had a God-given voice, and he always was singing. And his mother had a lovely voice, I understood. And he often would go to different places and sing. He was very shy. He told me stories like I, I, when my parents had a party, he would hide behind a door and sing. <laughs> And um, it was just a God-given voice, a beautiful voice. He auditioned in Chicago at a radio station. They didn't have TV then. And he was hired by a manager of a radio station. So he went to Oklahoma City to KYW, and that's my hometown, Oklahoma City. So he was uh, singing on a television, a radio show, excuse me, in Oklahoma City. And my brother was the script writer, and they became best of friends. Mike spent a lot of time at my house. And I was a teenager, and I wrote in a little diary, that's the man I'm going to marry. I went to the radio station with a friend, and we were playing records at the station. And he, this young man went to get an, uh, another record, and Mike came over to me. And he said, Genevieve, <clears throat> When this war is over, will you marry me? And I thought a minute, and I thought, it's a dream. <laughs> and so I said, yes, I will. So I got out of school early. I put a little powder blue suit on, sneaked out of the house. Mike met me, and we went with Harold, Harold Betts and his wife to, and drove to Norman, Oklahoma. That's a great football town, as you know. <laughs> so we went to the justice of the peace. The other problem we had, the war, and we were madly in love, and my parents were lonely. So we thought the only thing, the only way we could get married was to not tell the right age. So I said, we wrote 19 on the marriage certificate. So then, Later on, we went back home to my house. We played cards with my mother and dad, <laughs> gin rummy. <laughs> and then um, my dad looks at Mike and says, son, I think it's time you ought to get out of here. <laughs> so um, Mike left and went back to his apartment. And um, then he was, um, it was very shortly after that, he was shipped to, um, he had to go to Chicago. So then uh, he was shipped out. So he let me know that he was low, he was now stationed in um, uh, Los Angeles, outside of Los Angeles. So I went and we stayed with this lady and her husband, and um, it was quite comfortable. It was nice for us. We loved to see movies. He loved movies. So we went to this movie theater, and we're sitting there, and the newsreel came on, and it was Clark Gable christening the S.S. Carol Lombard. The S.S. Carol Lombard is named in honor of the star whose motion pictures were known around the world. Lieutenant Commander Robert Montgomery and Miss Lombard's husband, Captain Clark Gable, are here as Irene Dunn smashes the traditional bottle against the ship's bow. With this great merchant ship, the American people pay tribute to an ardent patriot. A week later, Mike was shipped out on the SS Carolina. He ended up in Baltimore, Maryland. And in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, I took a train again to meet him there. And it was so wonderful. And then uh, he was being uh, what they call mustered out. Prior to that, he had a very good friend that um, took him into Los Angeles. 
And there was, at that time, a show called uh, Meet Your Navy with Jenny Sims. Don booked Mike on the Jenny Sims show. And he sang so beautifully, and I was out to here with twins, but he sang strange music, and it was so beautiful. So um, Kay Kaiser called and wanted to hire him. So finally, um, television was about to approach. So they moved the show, and he did the um, Kay Kaiser show in New York. So we moved to New York at the Wellington Hotel. We had a huge suite there. We, well, we thought it was such a luxury. <laughs> and uh, the twins were wonderful. We, uh, I was able to take the strollers and take them to Central Park and do things like that. We caught a lot of shows and it was a nice time. So then one day, after all the kids on the show were doing what they were doing, and nobody expecting Kay to say this, but Kay says, I'm retiring. So there went the show. It, he just said it, I'm going to retire. So everybody was saying, where are we going? What are we going to do? So there was a gentleman named Ishka Bibble on the show, and so Mike and Ish decided to do a poor man's Martin and Lewis. So we went on the road to Texas, everywhere you could think, and Mike played straight for Ish. And it was a cute act. It really was a cute act. And after they, they broke up, then Mike started playing nightclubs and singing in clubs. And he had wonderful experience for his talk show that he did. And this was, he paid his dues, let's put it that way. Then uh, later on, he was, um, he was offered a, a show in Chicago, and it was a talk show. And it was called High Ladies, and it was at WGN. In Chicago, in junior high school, uh, I may be a little off on this, but I thought he was doing three shows, High Ladies and a couple other shows at the time, and I felt that he was a busy person and a gifted person in every way. And I, I knew that uh, he was something very special and wonderful and uh, he was on his career was rising I really didn't go to his show very often my mother watched his show every day we were in school and uh, they really did try to I think provide uh, a normal life for us we had a wonderful uh, youth in Chicago and everything together so then we ended up going back to California he said, that's where the business is, that's where sh we should be. So we went back to California, and while we were there, he gets a call from Woody Frazier. And he says, Mike, I've been looking for you. He said, they're going to do a show out of Cleveland, Ohio. And he said, I would like you to come in and audition for it. So he went back to Cleveland and auditioned, then he came home. He said, honey, I think I got it. And I said, that's great. And our twins at that time were going to a Catholic school, but it was also a boarding school. They were in high school, which is a very difficult time for children to make a change. And they, said, and they had moved so much with us. So, I, so they really encouraged us to let them stay in boarding school till we got settled. So we went back, we moved uh, to Cleveland, Ohio, and he started his show, The Mike Douglas Show, in Cleveland, Ohio, with Westinghouse. And it just, and he had young staff. These kids were fabulous. They were just, Lana Newman, Woody, I mean, it just went on and on. And, and they loved Mike, and Mike had had all this experience, so he was like a teacher to them. But they had the enthusiasm, and that enthusiasm was fabulous. So um, Sammy Davis was doing a concert. Sammy came on. It just all these big people, stars, were coming to Cleveland, and they're doing this show. And word got around how important the show was and how much fun they had. So it grew and grew and grew out of Cleveland. And Kelly was in 
grade school, first, no, first grade. And, um, well, the twins in the meantime had flown to Cleveland and went to high school. I remember moving into our small house in Radnor and uh, just thinking like, oh boy, this is a new school, a new place, and just everything was just a new start for all of us. And uh, it was a small house, so um, we all, we were very close. And I remember, um, I guess, little things that dad um, that used to feed the geese in the backyard. And I mean, he just always had time for us and always had time for our animals. And, and I think the one thing I remember the most is that as hard as he worked, we always had our home time. We Here, this show that started locally in Cleveland was going to go into syndication with WKY and with Westinghouse. And then later, um, I called it, and a lot of people have called it. It was a forced move from Cleveland. It had something to do with the the uh, owning too many stations. So we moved to Philadelphia. And we loved Cleveland. It was so difficult to move. I was pregnant, and my mother told me that they were moving the show to Philadelphia. And I, she said, I don't think I'll be able to babysit Chris, but I'll come back and see the baby. We never missed a holiday in Philly. We were either at the Mummers Parade, or we were always driving to Philly. and being very careful in my mom and dad's beautiful home with all these little little children. Every time we visited, I had another baby. You know, I had four, so, uh, but we were always, we were in Philadelphia a lot. It was a big house, and I was so used to being tight-knit and being in that small house that it was just new, having a huge room, and I remember them putting me at one end of the house, and um, dad used to tease me as I got older, and I think back, uh, Everything was seemed so big and so dark, and I remember that when we'd have a storm, Dad said he'd hear all the doors slamming all the way from where my room was to their room and just leap into bed with them. I was so, you know, wanting to be closer to him, and I think we had a discussion early on, and I ended up moving my room closer to that end of the house. You know, they wanted me to have a big room and have my privacy, but I'd rather have this small room that was next to... Actually, it was right next to my dad's bathroom, so I could, in the morning, I could hear him singing in the shower, and it just, I always liked hearing, you know, just the noise of them being near. Uh, when he came home, he was dad to us, and we did more of athletic things with him uh, rather than show business, necessarily. I played basketball, and uh, it was always after school, and of course, that was when he was taping the second show, and I remember, Thinking, he said, one of these days I'm going to make it to the game. I'm going to be there. And I said, oh, I know how your schedule is. It's okay. And, and I remember turning around and my coach looking at me. And I turned around. I could just see through the doorway, uh, the main door of the gym, that my dad had his hand against the door. And he was peeping around the corner. Because if he had come in, certainly it would have brought more attention to that than the game. And he didn't want to upstage anything. But he was there. And I just knew that he was there watching. And, that was all that was important. He could. We talked every day. I always say, hi, handsome, because I thought he was so handsome anyway, and he loved that. And he would always um, tell me how proud he was of me. So it's hard not to hear that. <laughs> well, Mike um, was told that they were going to move the show to uh, California. He said, if I move, I want I will not want to move unless you offer positions to everybody that's working on the show. So they did. And here we are with this beautiful home, and we've had such great years in Philadelphia. I think it amounted to about 13 and a half years. We loved it. So we moved out there, and we found a nice house, and things started falling into place very nicely for us. He got very into the show, and it was becoming more and more of a success. Um, I think that when we'd go to dinner and people would come over to the table, I, I think then I started realizing that it's not just myself and the, my sisters and my mother that were important, but we had to share his success with others, which in a, in a way was a tremendous compliment.
All my friends used to watch, and uh, we used to watch when I was at West Baker Hall in Ohio State. We used to watch my dad. I used to walk in, and I would always go incognito. I never really uh, divulged to too many people who my father was. Not because I was embarrassed, I was terribly proud, but I, I would walk through the lobby of the dorm and uh, Paul Warfield was in my dorm and other, other influential Ohio people and um, no one knew who I was. But they were all watching the Mike Douglas show and I was pretty proud. <laughs> I watched it every day if I could. I really did. I wanted to know what my family was doing. I know my mom was seriously involved in it, and uh, I stayed really close to the show. Had a lot, a lot of respect for what he was doing. I was very, very impressed on how objective he was, what a good listener he was. So there were some times I think he wishes he hadn't listened to me with maybe the long sideburns that I had him grow and told him he had to be hip, you know, for all of us to want to be a part of things and being watching the show every afternoon after school. So, um, but I wanted my dad to be right up there with, you know, what was happening at the time. We enjoyed watching my father more than anybody else on the show. Sorry, that's an honest answer. I loved his voice. I loved his voice. So he should have had the limelight more, I think, but he really uh, didn't mind taking a back seat at all because. Uh, he uh, brought out the best in people. Just admire him to this day, but I want people to also, I would love people to know how much input my mother had into that relationship, because it really, really, um, she has so many talents that uh, helped him. It's hard to uh, think of my mother by herself without her mate. The one thing that uh, personally I always loved the most was the fact that my parents had each other and had such a wonderful loving relationship and um, I think we all wanted that. We wanted to have the same thing and they taught us um, no matter what family was always, I'm sorry, was always important and uh, I think um, with my daughter and my sisters and their children we all feel that way as well. If it's a choice between work or family, that family will always be number one.